Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for my client Mike's vlog. And uh, of course Mike is back and forth at a couple different gyms at the moment. He's in the middle of a, a transition and move. And you know, I'm hoping he'll be able to continue the vlogs. And you know, I get a lot of people who ask, uh, you know, when they see someone not in a vlog anymore, like, oh, are they still on Team Blaha? Yeah, a lot of times they are. Just not everyone is vlogging and recording all the time. You know, some of them take breaks, some of them come back. But filming as much stuff as we do for the vlog is a bit of a commitment for people. Sometimes people like to have their little bit of privacy, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So not all of my clients who have even done vlogs want to always do them all the time. So it's just something to remember because it's voluntary, right? It's voluntary. I don't you know, tell my clients and say, hey, you should do the vlog, or, or we don't do a special offer. It's not like they get, uh, you know, a discount or anything else because they're doing a vlog. So just because they're not vlogging, <laughs> it doesn't mean that they're not uh, still clients simply because it's voluntary, right? I have clients who ask me and say, hey, I want to do the vlogs. That's how pretty much every one of them uh, comes into doing it, right? So, what's Mike's training look like this week? He did a medium grip on a football bar for a bench. He did 315 on it and called it a day because he's not used to that bar. He's like, that was kind of tough. Then, we did some sets of 10 on the floor press. So, this is his max effort day. Then, he's doing some JM presses. All right? I mean, this is a very straightforward, uh, definitely power lifter <laughs> type max effort day for today. Uh, again, floor presses, JM presses, very, very west side-ish there. All right, uh, he did some wide grip pull-ups, but we're also, I think, later throughout uh, the week, we kind of pulled some of those out uh, to focus more on rows. You know, because the, the more I do this, the more I realize rows just bring so much more for a lot of my lifters. I like pull-ups. Uh, I find I get a lot of overuse out of them, and a lot of my lifters start getting the same things. You know, this is something I notice over time. You know, given enough time, my lifters who do pull-ups and chin-ups all the time, you know, those lifters start to report some overuse also. I get occasionally get strained lats. We get, you know, bicep inflammation, things like that. Uh, and we just get less of that with rowing. So I'm doing more and more these days. Uh, you know, a lot of times my lifters who love pull-ups and chin-ups, I still limit uh, allowing them to do them all the time. But then, of course, he also threw in some, some band press downs there. Uh, max effort squat day. He did a, a squat with a transformer bar. Got up to 415. He's like, man, that thing really pulled me forward. So he was he was a little scared of going up heavier. And I agree with that because he really pulled him forward. You saw his chest cave. And it's just the nature of that bar. Right? It's just the nature of that bar. Of course, you guys saw me also this weekend. Uh, you know, put up one of my guys doing like 535 on that same bar but you know that guy's a little bigger a little stronger in the lower body all right so after that we did some chest supported rows here all right he did some some machine chest supported rows uh again doing a little more row variations it's i want to really get mike's upper back and stuff a little bit thicker all right we want to get a little bit thicker uh, after that we followed up with cambered bar good mornings all right, and Mike's getting respectable at his good morning strength. It's getting up there. It's not quite where I would want it, uh, you know, and I still see his hip hinging as being, a, you know, an overall weak link for him. It's one reason his deadlifts are not great, uh, you know, as good as I would like them to be. Uh, you know, it's, it's hip hinging. Like Mike has quads. He's got, he's got a good bench. I mean, he's benched 350. You know, it's his best bench. What we lack is the posterior chain strength that I would like still. And you know, it, it's taking us a long time to build that up. It's one reason we, we struggle with the deadlift for him. Uh, and you know, I've had other people bring that up and they're like, well, maybe he just does more deadlifting. We did that for a while, it didn't help. Furthermore, it's just, it's not necessary to do that much deadlifting to have an elite deadlift. It's not just me that says that. It's guys like Andy Bolton even pointed that out. It's just not necessary. Not saying we shouldn't be doing some deadlifting and some heavy deadlifting and speed pulls. But we don't need large amounts of deadlift volume to get a big deadlift. You know, and it beats you up. 
Um, you know, and there are phases and types of training I've even programmed for people to where they do high volume deadlifting just to get all around thick and it does work. But it will limit the amount of total training volume we can put in. And in some cases it may actually limit hypertrophy if we're not careful just because our total training volumes get, get very, very uh, compromised by that. Of course, after that, he finishes up with some glute ham raises and reverse hyperextensions, which, you know, sound like a broken record there in these vlogs, right? Again, any of my clients who have them are going to use them. I think it's very, very difficult to go wrong with those. All right, speed bench day, we ran uh, speed bench against chains, right? We rotated grips, uh, close, medium, wide, which is usually how, how we like to do it. Uh, then he did some football bar floor pressing. And again, he kind of told me the same thing with this. He goes, "Those are, these are super hard. He's like, I was not ready for how difficult these are going to be. Uh, and, you know, in this case, it may be limiting his total work that he can do because he's struggling that much with this bar. So I don't know that in his case this is necessarily ideal other than, hey, it is bringing up some weak links. Like if this bar is that difficult for him, you know, you notice the weight on it compared to his normal bar, uh, it might be something to needing to work it. All right, then of course he does uh, JM presses, which I'm a big fan of. And I'll, I'll be working some of these back in, I think, myself after, after um, my meet, after Worlds. But uh, Mike does great with these. Like for him, these really, really build up his triceps. Like uh, it's, I think we've had more luck with this than, than anything else for him. You know, particularly if we keep some bands in there, do some reverse bands, band works, chains with it, things like that to uh, keep the elbow tendonitis in check. And I think that's really the key to the JM press, you know, is, is doing band work to strengthen your tendons and then being able to use accommodating resistance on it as necessary. All right, after that, we knocked out some one-arm dumbbell rows. And I just do these standing on, on something like, like you guys see me do. People can do them either way. You know, get clients who are like, well, which one do you think I should do? I'm like, which one are you more comfortable with? All right, it's pretty much the same exercise. It's just what's more comfortable for you to set up, right? It's personal preference. But again, great exercise. This has become one of my favorites. It wasn't always. It wasn't always, uh, it's become one of my favorites. Um, I, and I really like this in seal rows. For anyone who's got a way to set up seal rows, I'm a big fan, massive fan of that combination. Uh, you know, in my case, it was kind of a pain in the butt to set them up. I'd like to get a seal row bench, you know, but inverted rows work, you know, pretty well in, in place of that. All right, uh, he did that and then afterwards we do high rep band press downs. Again, keeping those elbow tendons healthy. Right, improving the tricep lockout strength also. Because again, the nature of the movement, not just the accommodating resistance, but, but the way that you have to outrun the bands on it. It makes you good at locking faster. Okay, then he did safety bar box squats against bands for speed work. And look how far he sits back on that. You know, I get a lot of, a lot of people, uh, other clients who are like, you know, how do I perform these? And then I, I link them bike stuff. Because notice how far he's able to sit back, all right? It's really what we want to see there. All right, then we had speed pulls against heavy bands, all right? A conventional deadlift for him. Uh, again, getting some very, very good speed there. All right, uh, we followed that up with some, some chest supported rows. Uh, and again, you're going to see that tendency. I'm wanting to push more and more rowing for Mike. I really feel like for him, bringing his upper back up, bringing his lower back up, uh, glutes, all that stuff is really where it's going to be for him. All of his strength gains at this point, I think, are going to come out of that. Uh, those are his, his weak areas. Some people are looking at him going, those are weak areas? I'm like, for my lifters, it is. Yeah. They are what's holding him back. They represent his biggest weak links. Definitely not these belt squats. All right. So after that, we do belt squats. And then we go to my mainstays. It's going to be the glute ham raise and reverse hyper. Uh, but I like the belt squats too. You know, again, if my lifters have access, 
if they have access, we're going to do them. Right? We'll do them. You know, if they don't, I'm okay with leg presses. Some of my guys will do isolateral leg work. Right? We can do isolateral leg work. And in, in some cases, you know, we'll just do higher up goblet squats. You know, with a kettlebell, with a dumbbell, things like that. Uh, again, if we, if we need the quad and the ductor work. I think we're getting to a point with, with Mike here, though, to where those just aren't, aren't limiting us. They're not our weak links. This is posterior chain for him and upper back. But glute ham raises address that, reverse hypers address that. And that's why we utilize them. They're some of the best tools available for the job. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.